Welcome back, guys, to Talking Dog Shit. Episode number nine. Nine. Right? Nine. Yeah, that's it. So today, today we're gonna talk about um, what the hell do you call it, Jason? How long does it really take? Yeah, how long does it really take for dog training to become effective? We get tons of people that come in here, and I mean. Come on, Rebecca, how many people like say, oh, my dog already knows how to sit and they do down. And Wait, I'm sorry, what was my name again? Rebecca. Uh. <laughs> okay, just checking. They already know how to sit and they already know how to down and I'm like, really? Okay, well, well show me. And, and they're like, down, down. And they got, the, you got some treats? No, I, I don't want to get treats, just, just make it down. You say down and it should go down, right? Just because you did it like five times with a treat at home doesn't mean that it actually worked. Um, great example is why our board and trains work. Because they get thousands of repetitions. It takes thousands of repetitions for your dog to actually start comprehending the behavior. It's not five or 10 times, guys. It's not 10 times with a treat and they go to the ground, right? No, it has to be done thousands of times in order for the dog to go, ha ha, I get it. This is what this damn human wants me to do. Sound comes out the mouth, action is performed. I get rewarded and or corrected. Hmm, this worked. I should probably try it again. And that's how your dog's little brain works, guys. So we want you to start thinking about how much time are you realistically putting into training at home? Because even here, can you stop laughing at me now? I can't because you're... <laughs> Time right now, and how does it go? Thousands of repetitions, like thousands of repetitions. Get it right, people. <laughs> and back to the video here. So, in those thousands of repetitions, <laughs> there must be multiple levels of proofing being done as well. Uh, so, I'm going to touch on the real quick, like couple different parts of training. So there's like the training or teaching phase. It's the very first part of training. It's where you're actually showing the dog the behavior you want, i.e. sit. Yes, we use food, we use treats, we use body language, we use hand movements, everything under the sun to get this dog to be doing what we want. So, i.e. teaching training phase, right? We say, okay, sit, dog butt touches the ground, yes. Sit, dog butt touches the ground, yes. Dog starts doing it, okay. Hours later, sit, no hand movement, no food movement, right? So now we're starting to enter into the like proofing stage and starting to start saying, hmm, wonder if this actually is working. Is the dog comprehending? A quick interjection. It's not training for hours straight. These are in intervals. I just want to Good time. clarification. Great clarification. Okay. So we've put in hours of training at this point. Now we start saying, hmm, is this dog really starting to understand me? We start saying, sit, dog doesn't touch the ground. Uh-oh, now we have to start reinforcing at this page. So now we're saying, I think you understand what I'm asking of you. 999 times I've said sit, your butt touched the ground. On a thousand time, yep, using it again, your butt didn't touch the ground. So guess what, you're choosing not to do it. Now I can correct you, I'm reinforcing that behavior, and aha, learning has occurred in your dog. But this has taken place over multiple days and multiple sessions. And until you can say the word and your dog performs the action, it does not actually know it. Correct? Yes, yes. so I, th I know you're opening and like explaining what we're discussing, but someone else needs to take over because he's having a real hard time over here. So. I thought I did fairly well. So there's a lot of breakdown in training too. Like he just explained briefly um, some of the breakdown, you know, really generalized, but we start very, very simple. It also depends on your environment and, you know, stuff like that. You can't just, oh, in the middle of the living room randomly one day, I'm going to throw a treat at my dog and convince it to sit. And then now every single time I only give it food, you're going to build that. You, now your dog at this point may know sit, but it goes, mm, I'm only sitting if you give me food afterwards. Then that comes down to the logistics. Does your dog really know it? Or is your dog abusing the fact that you give it food every time you ask it to do something? The other thing too is, it takes so much consistency too. I can't just do 10 repetitions in the row and then bam, my dog knows sit. No, 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 no. I have to do the exact same thing in the next session, the exact same thing tomorrow, the exact same thing next week, and then hold that expectation. I can't, 
you know, never asked my dog to sit for another 10 years and then just expect that it has a perfect sit at that point. No, 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 I wasn't consistent. I didn't put in the effort in my time to make this dog understand on my level. That's the other thing. You have to be teaching in the way the dog actually understands because I can't just sit there and scream sit at a dog and it's gonna sit, it doesn't speak English. I have to teach them what that word means. I'm gonna teach you to stop banging on the table. It's not it's good. Dogs. <laughs> They're just sounds. Uh, to, everybody thinks uh, like the like we say it all the time. Oh, we gotta teach the dog what the word means. It's not even a word to a dog. It's a sound. It's all it is. It's a sound, and then we teach them. We associate the sound with something like. But it just takes way longer than what people think that it takes. Like even. Dropping your dog off and picking your dog up from training. We, if you're a dog trainer out there, or even if you've gotten your dog trained before, usually the expectation is I go, I drop my dog off somewhere, I pick it up, and it's just going, I'm gonna spew magic, I'm gonna have a magic tongue, and my dog is just gonna automatically listen to everything it hears from me, right? And then people get home and they don't do what we say to do. We'll tell them, leave your dog on a leash. They'll take the dog off the leash. We'll tell them, correct your dog if it doesn't do something. They don't correct the dog if it doesn't do something. And then they, it, it goes like this over and over again. And then six months down the road, they're back to where they, they started from. Because, hell, people come in here all the time with dogs that they, 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 they say, I've taken my dog here before to get trained and now the dog doesn't listen and it doesn't know this. Now, nine times out of ten, if we take, if we take the dog and, and put it in our hands, the dog does everything that it's supposed to do. Mm -hmm. It's just that you're not putting in the time or the effort. Yeah. Absolutely. Every time during the consultations, I cannot stress this enough to people coming in, especially if you know, we realize that, you know, your dog does, you know, could benefit from private lessons. I cannot stress enough. If you do not put in the work, it will not work. Straight up. Why we don't offer a guarantee, especially in the board and train program, we know that when the dog leaves here, it's going to be a badass dog. But if you don't maintain it afterwards, it's not going to hold. It's not going to stick. Or how hey, Rebecca, why why don't dropping your dog off for the weekend, why doesn't that work? I was just about to bring it up, I swear to God. <laughs> I just want to do boarding with my dog, and if you can just train it in the meantime, there's it's not enough time. It's not enough consistency for the dog. Um, I just want to do like a one-week board and training program. Uh, guys, it's not that simple. It's not magic. It doesn't work like that, too. Even the dogs that are in here for board and trains as well, like our programs are two weeks and three weeks long. The amount of work that goes into it, we don't just sit around all day. Your dog doesn't just sit in the kennel all day, like making tally marks on the walls, like counting. They're busy here the entire time. It's probably an average of four to six hours every single day, like working on this stuff, getting to level before even thinking of moving on to the next thing from there too. If it was easy, let's face it, we wouldn't have a job. That's why we're here for that, to help you with that as well. But just do what your trainer says. Right. Yeah, that too. Because <laughs> people ask, people ask, how come my dog listens to you? Or, man, it must be you. And, well, it is us. You know why it's us? Because your dog has a totally different relationship with us than your dog has with you. Your dog has spent a year, two years, three years getting away with behaviors that it shouldn't have been getting away with. As soon as your dog meets us, we're already teaching the dog which behaviors we're going to accept because I don't allow a dog to pull me all over the place. Like, it doesn't, you're not gonna pull me. You're not gonna drag me out, out into the yard. Like, don't pull me. like, I'm not going to accept that. So your dog has expectations with us from the get-go. As soon as they meet us, it's, okay, this person has set these boundaries and these rules. And then the whole time it's here, we have the same boundaries and rules. The whole time it's been with you, it's been getting away with shit. So... So I raised the opposite side of that. A trained dog. Well, it doesn't listen to my grandma. It doesn't listen, you know, it only listens to me. It only doesn't do these behaviors for me. 
It's the same concept. Yep, it's the same concept why your dog works better for us than if you're not upkeeping it. If your grandma doesn't make your dog get off the couch, of course the dog's gonna be on grandma's couch. And to add to your you know, point there, Jason, it's like, you know, why does the dog listen to us better? Well, in the time frame it's been here in the few weeks, how many sits at the doorways have we made it do? Hundreds, right? How many sits at the doorways have you made it do at home yet? None, right? So it doesn't have to do this. So again, we've added in more time into that training there. So the dog understands this human makes me stop and sit. This human doesn't care. So I'm just gonna do what I want here. Opportunistic animals. They're gonna take, yeah, from that other video. That's right. <laughs> Everyone got mad at me, yeah. So <laughs> let's not talk about that. So anyways, but dogs are opportunistic, right? Um, to add on time frames, right? there's a reason our programs are two and three weeks. Like, I've played with our programs over the years. We used to do a 10-day program. It just wasn't enough time frame. Like a lot of people, like Rebecca was saying, they're like, oh, I just want a week. Well, I'm not gonna do a week. I'm not gonna sell you a week's worth of training because I know I can't give you the results that are realistic in that week's time frame. Um, a lot of these training companies out there have these like five-day fixes, I call them. They're not realistic, guys. They're not. So we research that stuff a lot more. There's countless hours that actually go into real results in dog training. And that's not even to touch on the environmental aspect. I mean... What kind of quality ooh. are you getting out of a five-day fix? Minimal, at best. Yes, you're going to see improvements. Don't get me wrong. You're, five days, you'll How'd see some improvements. How they those improvements? They're usually rushed shall i say they're they're a little bit rushed a little aggressive especially if and, uh, one common thing that we get here is i want my dog to be off leash by the time it leaves here nope. how long does it truly how long does it truly take to have an off leash trained dog well the real answer is never never <laughs> never if your dog doesn't listen to you off leash i mean on leash forget about off leash <laughs> your dog's not going to listen to you off leash realistically Again, that's why we don't offer or, or advertise an off-leash program, right? You see all these companies out there, off-leash, three weeks, bullshit. Straight up bullshit, guys. <clears throat> all right? There's no such thing as a truly 100% reliable off-leash dog. Even my well-trained animals at home, they have a brain. They can make a choice here. And I can guarantee in three weeks, I'm not training any dog, including my own, to do any off-leash, fully reliable type of training there. Now, there's some caveats to that yes we can use a long line and dog will replicate no, but Rick, I got an no. e-collar Rick I got an e-collar e-collar e don't matter what tool you have on your dog it, it's not truly off leash what happens care. when you yeah. drop the remote exactly or or, leash. or my dog or, the leash. or my dog my dog is pretty close to solid off leash work on or off an e-collar does she 99.9% .9 of the time wear that e-collar when she's off leash absolutely because my dog sees a bird gone my dog sees a squirrel, gone. Not because she's not trained, but she's a pointer. That's what she was bred for. I'm sure bourbon would do the same. <laughs> yeah, so the hours that go into it, guys, think about it as this, and, and we have this conversation all the time here, how clients come in and they show off the tricks their dogs can do. All right, look, my dog high fives or rolls over or whatever it does. That's cool. If you would have took the same amount of time and invested it in not pulling me on a leash, you'd have the same results. But guess what? Watch my dog walk on a leash. That's not cool. <laughs> right? Nobody wants to show that off at family dinner, right? Look, my dog doesn't pull me on a leash. That's not cool. They want to see the high five or the spin move, right? They want to see the cool stuff. So you put more effort into that and your dog does that more reliably. So take that same time and put it into don't pull me. Stop at a door so I can actually unlock the door and walk in. Don't jump on company and you get similar results. Put the same amount of time into it so we can get those kind of cool results so you can show people, look, my dog doesn't jump on people but anymore. But my dog plays dead. Watch when you go pow pow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I'm a sucker for that one. I absolutely yeah. love that yeah. one, yes. Yeah, nothing wrong with them. I, I, listen, I admire you people. You put the time into those tricks. They're difficult to teach. They're not natural behaviors. But think about the time you put into it, honestly. Like, all you guys out there that taught high five, think, man, I, I spent probably a few hours on that over the time because I did it 10 times a day and, you know, five times every other day and whatever it may be. And all of a sudden it does it. So take that same kind of time and put it into something actually more practical, guys. So, 
All right. And then we got a little bounce around on that there, but realistically, the whole point of this video is to make sure you guys are understanding that there is an actual realistic time to an actual realistic outcome on what you're gonna get from your dog here. And stop signing up with those five day fix programs. They don't work, they suck. I'm not gonna name drop anybody. So. <laughs> you gotta do double thumbs now. That's better, <laughs> much better. So. All right, guys, we're gonna wrap up here. So we wanna hear your feedback. Like always, please comment. Make sure you hit that like button, the subscribe button, the little bell. Guys listening on podcast, obviously you don't have that, but download it or share it, whatever it is you guys do on the Spotify and Apple Podcasts and all that cool thing. And we will see you guys in the next episode of Talking Talk Dog, Dog Shit. Shit. See ya. <laughs>